Hello and welcome to episode 23 of the Xenothesis podcast. Uh, this episode we're covering chapters uh, 7 and 8 from part 4 training floor of book 1 Dawn of Octavia Butler's Xenogenesis trilogy. Uh, and I'm joined uh, for the penultimate time on this book by my co-host. Michael Glinka. hi everyone. We're almost there. Yes, almost done. Yeah. Oh man, it's it's pretty exciting and sort of sad at the same time because, uh, you know, the book's finished. <laughs> It means that we have only two more to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as we uh, continue with our coverage of this series, uh, yep, quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of stuff. I suppose that's um, well. This was twenty-four episodes ish. Uh, yeah, twenty-four episodes. So uh, we'll be uh, an- another <laughs> maybe forty-eight episodes worth of content. That's uh, that's and that's wait, hold on a second. So we <laughs> recorded every two weeks. Uh, yes. So that basically means that uh, with the last episode being 24 for the like, the book, it's so 24, 48 weeks, basically a whole year to record on the one book. Plus, of course, the extra episode in Cyberpunk, so that gives it you know 50 weeks basically mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. for to cover one book. Man, yep. that's that's, uh... that's crazy. Yeah. I just <laughs> it's just a sheer of um, sheer um, realization is pretty overwhelming. Yeah, it's a quite quite a long uh, quite a long amount of time to spend on the thing. And uh, actually, I think we we, uh, we were talking before, and we figured out that we've um, well, we'll probably have talked about this book for about twenty four hours on on air and the recordings. Um, and the actual audio book of the book is only like nine hours and ten minutes or something. Jeez. Wow! <laughs> so we managed to talk about the book for like at least twice as long as the book. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. But from all of that, actually, in fact, I think. I think when I look uh, when I look at the recording when I edit, for example, I've noticed that when I go through the chapter summary, right? So when I write mm-hmm. the summary, it's actually much much shorter to what our discussions are. Yeah, yeah, and uh, intentional, right? That's a, it's a starting point. Yeah, but like the the fact is that you know, like the summary, you know, it's it's short. So I think. I think that if we actually went down and calculated how long we've talked, well, you know, the summary, right? And then, mm-hmm. how much we talked about science? I think the nine hours for the audiobook is actually pretty, pretty solid, and we think oh, yeah. we would fit within those uh, those nine hours to um to match that with mm-hmm. just the book summaries, uh, chapter summaries. <laughs> so it's uh, just everyone. We just love to go off tangent. Like I mean, by now it should be obvious that we just yeah, like when there's an interesting that. topic, we just keep going. We can keep going about it. <laughs> Uh, yes, so um, having started with that tangent, <laughs> yes, <Go laughs> let on. us return to um, the, the the usual uh, structure and, and talk about your uh, uh, predictions coming into chapter seven. Sure. So I, as if everybody remembers, the last uh, chapter we had Lilith and the Kali reaching Kurt's camp. So I thought that basically what's going to happen is the there will be a confrontation, obviously. That's that's pretty much obvious, um, but I thought that there'll be more people dying, and uh, my guess was that Kurt is going to die this time. Okay, uh, which I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he, uh, he didn't die, but um, he uh, is uh, suffering some kind of fate. <laughs> some sort of fate, you know. At least yeah. we. C- I don't know if suffering is the c- correct word, but um, yeah, it's um, it's. Oh well, it is what it is, but. Yeah, I was wrong on this one. I actually generally thought that Lilith somehow, like, will just in in anger and rage, just gonna pummel the hell out of him uh, mm. or something. But I got it, the feeling she kind of wanted to. But um, yeah, I, I'm hundred percent. Not not sure. really. You know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah, yeah. just sort of, uh, you know the usual kind of anger where you you uh, someone has severely wronged you and you want you feel like you want to kill them, but not like actually want to kill them, kind of thing. Um, I, I suspect that's kind of where she was i doubt she would have i mean she would might she might well have hit him and given her enhanced strength that might have hurt him more seriously than she intended but um yeah i don't she's not uh I, and but judging by her kind of character who, judging mm-hmm. by her character i think it's um also a bit against her i would say to to kill a human being although mm-hmm. she was told that she was permitted to in her self defense i don't think she would do it anyway yeah, I mean, I, I, she does not strike me as the kind of person who would uh, commit a cold-blooded murder. Like, uh, she might kill someone if it was strictly necessary uh, in some sense, and she had no other choice. But uh, 
uh, yeah, she just doesn't come across as someone who would just sort of uh, uh, you know, kill out of vengeance. Stabby, stabby. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, right. So shall we start with the chapter seven summary? Uh, yes, let's let's go with that. Sure. So we start the chapter with description of Kurt's camp. Uh, basically, you know, talk about how everything is in like not the way it should be prepared. You know, the the roofs are made of like palm leaves and of uh, thatch, and it's just you know everything is just leaking, broken, and the way Lily describe it, it's hot, smoky, dirty, and angry, like like it's people, right? So mm. and. Basically, the scene starts with the people of the Kurtz camp just standing, um, facing the Onkali and Lilith, standing with weapons and just waiting for you know what's going to happen next. Um, Lilith tells the Cash that she can only fight Kurt, um, not the others. Uh, obviously, no, nobody really wronged her as much as Kurt did. Although hmm. I would say in here, personally, I think Gabriel would deserve a punch in the face. <laughs> but um, you know. That's above mm. the point. Uh, but the Kanch tells her that they will try to subdue them by dragging them, basically just trying to touch them and then drag them to completely pacify them. Yeah, yeah. it seems like the the Oankali have decided that this uh, little cabal needs to be broken up and brought back to the um, the camp for further training because they, they've killed Joseph and they've uh, screwed up making their camp. Uh, so it's just uh, the kind of resetting things at this point yeah i guess i guess it's resetting although i would say that it's more of like right we know who's who and who's not going to the earth and who's going and stuff like that i guess this this was this clarified yes. everything mm, that's yeah so the, the 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 those who have disqualified themselves from going to earth are being removed as well so yeah yeah kurt and uh i, I think is it I, just kurt at this I point i think but i think at this point it's just kurt though hmm. uh, but we'll get to that so this is um, uh, what Kurt says to them. You know, this is the human place. It's off limits to you and your animals. Um, he started a little, held his axe ready, and Liv just stood there, wanting nothing more, just to get to get to Kurt and kill him at that point. But Nikan mm. stood there and told her, you know, like he isn't going anywhere. Like he's staying with them and not going to Earth. And uh, I think the way book describes it is that Liv was sort of like in. Just when she saw Kurt, it was in a rage, and she didn't mm. get what Nikanj originally said. But eventually, it sort of to his words, he repeated himself, and the words penetrated that wall of hatred and anger in in her mind. And um, and off to on, off to one side, we have Kaguya approaching, you know, Tate and Gabriel, um, also both standing with weapons, and Lily thought that it was all Gabriel's fault for Tate's abandoning her. Um, mm. She thought maybe the reason why it happened was because Tate didn't want to be like Lilith, basically aban- abandoned by the rest as an outcast. And Tate then asked Kaguya to stay away, but the Uloi says that if they do anything stupid, they will lose their chance to return home and to be free. That's when Kurt cuts in and said that they have everything here and they need nothing from them. But Kaguya just basically in his patronizing t- uh, you know, tone just goes, you know, they can barely, you could barely survive here as is without any help, not understanding how to use what they have. And they would die eventually if it left alone. And basically, in fact, they were allowed mm. to leave to learn um, from each other and from Lilith, but they literally killed a person and they didn't, you know, their own Kali didn't predict that that would happen. Yeah, um, they, they failed their Earth survival exam, which seemed to be the, uh, uh, the conclusion here. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. But it's interesting because we, this is what Kurt go, uh, says. We didn't kill a human being, he shouted. He, we killed one of your animals. And Kaga is like, we? Saying mildly. Mm. And who helped you kill him? Yeah, that's interesting that. Because it's, it's, uh, he's sort of uh, you know, identifying with the group, right? You know, we, uh, all these people who are supposedly allied with him. Um, and they're calling him on that, which is quite quite interesting. Like, you know, like no, no, don't don't try and pawn this off as a collective action, right? You you killed him, right? It's a uh, an interesting attitude. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that, like, I guess it's uh, one of the reactions, like you know, if somebody's trying to did something, right? Let's say did a, and hmm. people are just trying to um, 
spread the blame between everyone because then it's the consequences usually are lower in a way right if you know if you do mm. something stupid in the class and then say oh we did it right usually mm. like there's less repercussion to be done to the whole class versus one person right mm. Mm. yeah sort of uh, spread some of the responsibility around um yeah and also make the the people who are following him feel um as though they were somehow involved right now making it more of a um almost like a, a political action of some yeah. kind you know it's yeah. a it's a, a a joint thing that they did as a uh and a, a we are all in this together rebellion against the owen carly exactly yeah yeah try and pull them together but uh yeah they uh immediately diffuse that They're like no 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 this was you yeah uh, hold on <laughs> hold on a second son that's not we there's no we it's just you mm. let's yep. be honest and I, I think that's essentially probably quite a good uh quite a good strategy from from them there just uh oh yeah you know, yeah is- isolate him and separate off the the people who were his sort of erstwhile followers um and some of which were doing so reluctantly uh, yeah. But, yeah 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 absolutely and mm. this is where you know kakuya continues to tell him that if it was it was just him that beat joseph first of all unconscious and then proceeded to kill him with an axe and mm. with that you know that's he exiled himself permanently from the earth uh, and then proceeded to question the rest, but, but well, not question, but more like voicing his, ev- to everyone that if they're willing to follow him, or are they willing to follow him, or do they want to go back to their planet, right? And that basically sort of starts to bring that people are like, oh, oh, okay. So mm. people just realize, like, okay, that's maybe not better to associate with uh, ourselves with him. Yeah, um, I think they can, can. I think they can. They can tell that. Uh, you know he's not going to win this engagement, um, and and they're sort of uh, you know, are sort of breaking the spell a little bit here. Right? They have this sort of uh, cultivated this delusion that they might be able to you know, go their own way here, mm, but mm. Um, it, it's pretty clear that they don't have that o- option available to them, um, and Kurt is not going to be able to let them you know, uh, separate themselves off from the Oh and yeah. Carly is not their route to freedom. So if they want their, their chance to get back to the planet, then uh, they have to cut their losses here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, and as it will happen, right, like the other Oloi started to, call, you know, approach the humans. And one of the first one was the Alison's Oloi. Um, just like, you know, going towards her and then speaking to her gently and then basically re- resulting with her dropping her weapon and just coming back with it. And when Lilith looked at her, Alison apologized for what happened. They thought that they, they could avoid bloodshed if by going along with them. Um, hmm. But just as Kaguya tried to reach to a state, Gabriel snatched her behind him and shouted that they don't need them here. That, in turn, started Kurt, whom, uh, in which is a wordless scream of rage, just called for an attack and just attacked them. And that's where things were happening fast. First of all, Tate and a few other humans, who, as this is what the book says... Tate and a few mm. other humans who seem to want nothing more to uh, than get clear found themselves caught in the middle. Ray and Leith earlier, hold, uh, half supporting one another, stumbled out of the fighting between a pair of Uloi who seemed about to be slashed by three machete wielding humans. Liv realized suddenly that Leah was bleeding and she ran to help her to get away from danger. Um, mm. That's when also Lilith saw Gabriel, try to, uh, Gabriel trying to kill Nikanj but missing. And just as he missed, Kaguya just approached him from the back and, you know, like solid snake style, just basically touched his neck and just dragged him, making him collapse. Yeah. It's a. Uh, I mean, trying to fight the Owen Kali just seems like. <laughs> like it, I don't understand really what the. Like, why you would even bother to try in this regard, because it's just like they have this this stinging thing. I mean, they can basically just. The moment they like, touch you, you're out. Uh, yeah, as soon as they can touch you, if they, if they land a single like light touch somewhere on you, and you, they can just drug you unconscious immediately. It's yep. like uh, you know that they outnumber you, and you've got no, nothing ranged to hit them with. It's just like it, yeah, this is a losing proposition from the get go. <laughs> well, yes, if you look from from the side, but you know, at that point, a lot of them were just yeah, yeah. I think it's just irrational anger at this point. Yeah. So at this point, it's not really. There's not really. You can't. We can't really apply any logic to this because there is no logic behind it mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. So 
chapter continues with Tate, you know, description of like Tate dropping her weapon, getting under a fight, when you know, rendering himself harm- harmless. Um, but few humans still, including Kurt, were a bit different. You know, like Kurt was just swinging like mad, and uh, so the all I couldn't approach him. Uh, while someone else managed to attack a Nulo and hit them, you know, across the chest. Uh, but before they could hit with a deadly blow, another Oloi got them from behind and made, you know, turn them unconscious. Um, the hurt Oloi returned back to Lilith and the rest of the group, and when Lilith asked it if there was anything they can do, um, it said just, it's fine, it will heal. Yeah, it seems like it, it had what was... Um you know, visually quite a dramatic wound, right? It's got like a, a big chest wound, Gosh, basically. Yeah, it's true, it's uh, kind of like bleeding quite a lot and, you know, excreting some weird fluids. Um, uh, so like, it, it looks like it's been relatively seriously injured, but but it, it, it doesn't seem to be too bothered. It's, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it seems that like, oh, this is nothing. Like, I mean, something yeah. probably that would render another human dead for them was just mm. not, not much issue. Um, but it's surprising what it says to her, to Lilith. It's just, it says that, oh, you know, it's fine, it will heal. But it said that it never knew how hard it would be not to kill them, right? Mm. So it's, I guess, this is like, there is the response of, like, them, you know, that, like, stinging that could potentially poison the humans and kill them immediately. Um, mm-hmm. this is always that. It's hard not to do it. But at the same time, hard, I guess there was this thing that, like, you know, they could, although I probably didn't face their own humans because they couldn't hurt them, the same as the way humans couldn't hurt their own respective Oloi. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, and I hadn't thought of it like that. thought of it like that. But this is what Lilith says to him back when he says, like, you know, how hard it would be not to kill them. You should have known. You had plenty of time to study us. What did you think? Uh, will happen when you told us you were going to extinguish us as a species by tempering genetically with our children. The Uloi focus on her again. If you had used a weapon, you could probably have killed at least one of us. These others couldn't, but you could. I don't want to kill you. I want to get away from you. You know that. I know you think that. Yeah, that's, that was an interesting exchange there. Uh, especially the last bit, the I know you think that component. I mean, Lilith is just sort of giving voice to what we've been saying. Right? Pretty much, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> it's it was just so um, frustrating hmm. to yeah. when you it's it's like you know in this situation I would say it's like in real life when you have a meeting and you say mm-hmm. something to your boss like, listen, you can do 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 this or this. If we do A. It probably work. It's gonna take some time. If we do B, it's gonna take less time, but it's not gonna work. Uh, but <laughs> if your boss is uh, really rushing things and you're like, okay, let's do a B, and then it's like you don't, it doesn't work. It's like, what did I tell you? You lost money, you lost time. It's like it's sort of this similar situation. You keep talking to them, but they just mm. know better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they seem to have a um, a sense that they know better when they don't. <laughs> yeah. I think it's. Yeah. I think this is in itself a metaphor for a lot of things that happen in real life. That you know, people mm. don't listen to each other, and this often happens to cases you know with kids, right? I, I just personally think this is often mm. when you when you listen to stories of like you no, know, obviously kids, kids usually are not that stupid. They just like the experience, right? That's that's the only difference mm-hmm. between us adults and children right it's the experience of things but it doesn't ma- doesn't mean that the point that children make is not valid children or teenagers mm. right so i think this is yeah, often yeah. like this this scene in itself is often the really representative of like what person a who may not have the experience or the position can see something but people are just too stubborn to accept it because of their position or status or whatever mm. yep uh, don't don't have some something necessary to communicate to to the people with the power to do something about it. Yeah, it's just, just uh, not not enough uh, uh, enough uh, credence given to their uh, to their voice, even when they have something that's that's accurate. Yeah. I suppose it's a a question of uh, finding a, a a way of convincing them. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but yeah. even sometimes, mm-hmm. like you know, it's not ma- no ma- doesn't matter how good your arguments or how convincing your arguments are. If somebody just doesn't want to listen to you, there is nothing you can do about it, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's a it's a, a frustrating situation when uh, when you have a a solid point but it's being ignored. Yeah, <laughs> and that uh, definitely seems to be the case here with Lilith. Right? She's been uh, saying, you know. You, you need to do this differently and they've not been listening paying attention. to her at all yeah yeah and this actually this conversation mm. is gonna repeat itself later on mm. and the uh, the uh, the last bit there the i know you think that that's um interesting I, I think is that in in reference to the wanting to get away from you bit i think that might be where the um the suloi is is sort of differing with Lilith it's like she it's it's saying that she thinks that she wants to get away but she doesn't really yeah I think it's the fact is that I think there's the meaning behind it what I understood from it um was the two two things right first of all is Mm. that the connection between her and for example Nikanj and Archa and Dichan has already been made right Mm. that Mm. sort of chemical biological connection between has already been established so it's Mm. much um different now right um plus the yeah, you know experience yeah. this stuff you know and i'm not talking just about the sex thing and stuff like it so it's more of like the whole story that um Lilith has encountered and second hmm. thing i th- think would be and i think this applies more to you and me to you and mm-hmm. i richard is that the alienness of the aliens itself right that that new different thing that 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 the fact that there's a being out there it's so much different to us, but it's on intelligence and similar, similar or higher than us. It's just mm-hmm. so, I would say, I'm not curious, but like so tempting in itself, right? Like mm, yeah, it's a compelling. Want, yes, very thing compelling to, and tempting. Yeah. That you know, you want to know more about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, like in 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 the circumstance where um, the the Ankali had arrived. And there was still civilization on Earth, right? We'd be really interested in, like, you know, exchanging, experiencing technology with them, engaging in trade on, on equal terms, and probably not so much the um, forced, quote unquote, trade that they uh, are interested in imposing with their uh, uh, their biological uh, understanding of that, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I imagine that they may have found. Human volunteers, a but, small number. Yeah, a small number. But I don't think um, it. What will happen is would be uh, as I think we talked about this before. But what will happen is that there will be some people that are interested in it. They would do it. Hmm. Um, some people would probably want to go on the spaceship with the aliens. But a lot of humans hmm. would be against it, and there will be not only you know humanity in humanity. There's a lot of discrimination for many different reasons, and it's only because people just want to find they do it because yeah, they yeah. want to find the differences between each other so that they can feel better hmm. about themselves. That's yeah. basically but, you know the background. But I say operating under the assumption that the that neither side actually initiated hostilities right no, no, assuming no, that's, that the, uh, yes assuming that there's the no Awankali hostility the didn't attack and that the humans didn't attack uh, the Awankali ship then you know, presumably humans who were interested in going to study Awankali culture or you know engage in trade with them in some sense uh, would you know would likely be free to leave the planet at least from some countries on on earth right so i imagine that you might well see uh just sort of a, you know a, a human uh contingent who go visit the don carly maybe they'd be shunned when they're back on earth but uh i think they you know you'd still get that outcome yeah um, yeah yeah absolutely yeah. it's just what i'm saying mm-hmm. is that um there would be if some for example on carly decide to stay on the planet yeah, right. that would be trickier, I think. Yeah, I think because... there would be a lot of um, discontent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I, yeah, you'd probably have, um, you know, terror attacks on the um, uh, uh, consulate or embassy or whatever it is that they would have as a uh, uh, an outpost on Earth. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I think it'd be very, very. I'd say delicate, but also very difficult situation because there's one thing we know we realized as aliens, right? Um, Hmm. And then the second thing would be like, oh, actually, no. If okay, let's assuming that everything is going peaceful, right? As peaceful as it could be, like they're like, oh, hi guys, Hmm. you know, 
we are just here because we're stopping by, right? If you're interested now, we can exchange the information, technology, blah, 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 right? They might be interested mm-hmm. in our, like, biology because they're on Kali that's about biology. We are interested yeah. in their technology, right, itself. So mm-hmm. we sort of exchange, right? Some humans are like, you know what? This sounds awesome, like an awesome adventure. We would mm-hmm. like to go with you. The guy is like, cool, cool, cool. And then Kali are go like, actually, there are some of our people that would be very interested in staying. Okay, sure, no problem. I guess only, uh, I guess it'd be very, very interesting. But I guess if there will Onka- some of the Onkali stay, right? Not as you said, there will not only be terrorist attacks, but there will be some countries like even Onkali was killed or found, or like they'll be like kidnapped. I'm sure they'll be hmm. sell sold like for body parts or something. It's just. Like animals, basically. Yeah, possibly. I mean, you wouldn't want to create a diplomatic incident, though. That could, no, um... I think that would be, you know. <laughs> but eventually, like, if the ship would flow away and the Samon Kali stayed behind, I feel like that would, would happen. Like, the, as this, the, there would be, like, humans versus pure humans versus the mixed humans versus the Onkali. It, it would be it would be a nightmare. Like, there would be a lot yeah, of yeah. things. Yeah, I mean, it... Yeah, that would uh, definitely play out uh, somewhat like that. Yeah, um, it'd definitely be some some serious conflict arising. But uh, yeah, they wouldn't have quite the same opportunity to to impose doing it exactly the way they want exactly, to do. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I think that yeah. would be a much difficult, much more difficult uh, thing to do if there would be still seven billion humans on the planet. Yeah, yeah. I, I suspect though that the um, the the process of trade would have gone a bit more. Um, a bit more smoothly and more balanced well, it, between both species. Exactly, because yeah, as much as I, you know, as I can believe, I think if every every country that has nukes just send them at the ship, that would, I'm sure that would cause quite a lot of damage. Yeah, uh, I, I imagine so. I, I mean, assuming they could actually uh, hit the ship and so on, but uh, it's uh, fair to assume that they'd do quite a lot of damage to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but maybe let's go back. <laughs> Yes, you know, we've, uh... um, so as that conversation we just discussed was taking place between Lilith and that uh, Oloi, um, suddenly Alison called out to her as, as Lilith turned around she saw Nikanj on the ground writhing in pain with Kurt on top of him. Fortunately at that point Kaguya stopped playing around and just jumped on Kurt and dragged him uh, making him the last person to go down. Lilith then ran uh, to Nikan, seeing that one of his sensory arms was basically almost cut, hacked off. Only a small mm. piece of tough grey skin was keeping it all together. When asked uh, by Lilith if he, she can do anything, Kaguya responded that perhaps, but she needs to lie down, hold the arm so it can reattach itself. She had to strip off her clothes in front of other humans. And as she held the arm together, Nikan sort of in a way, attacked her with all its sensory arms and hairs and connected to her body. Hmm. Yeah, there's a couple of interesting points there. So um, Nikanji's perhaps was um, described as being insanely calm mm. because, you know, it, it, its child is um, gravely wounded, um, but it still has this completely level uh, affect in its voice, which Lilith finds very strange. And annoying, <laughs> which, I guess. And, yeah, it's just like... Uh, uh, why are you not uh, you know, more panicking? Uh, 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 yeah, more panicked about this. Um, and then there's this whole um, this other thing with Kaguya, right? So, so whilst Lilith is sort of um, she give Kaguya sort of gives her some basic instructions, right? You know, take off the clothes so that Nikanji's sensory tentacles can can get to your skin yes, properly. Yes. Um, that's why she has to strip down to to help him um, so that. Uh, or help it rather so that it can um sort of uh, you know, get at her um her nervous system and have her hold mm-hmm. the stump in the right spot um and then uh, like the kaguya just kind of disappears yeah it goes um, away towards gabriel just, and tate yep and and lilith has this thought like oh, nothing more important going on here it's only your child horribly wounded it's yeah like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The usual sort of dislike of, <laughs> of uh, Kaguya. And I, but of, the thing is, it's, it is explained yeah. later on why. But at the time when I was reading, I was like, yeah, mm. that sounds really cold, mate. Like, honestly, yeah. he, it, it's crazy, like, how indifferent Kaguya can be. 
But I guess knowing mm. the past with Lilith, like anything, if he like shouted to her or something, the first thing would be she mm. would punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, I think we're, we can um, sort of skip forward a little bit on that one. But like after the fact, um, when Lilith is talking about this, it, it, uh, I think it's, uh, is it Nahajus or Dishan says to her that, um, you know, Kaguya was like, Panicking, basically, uh, here. panicking or terrified or whatever, um, but di- but knows that Lilith does not like it, so was just like get- gave her the basics and then got her out of out of her way so she wouldn't be distracted by it. Yeah, yeah, that's and basically sort of, uh, what they say. Which is like, it's fair point, right? But I feel like if yeah. if Kaka is like, can you please just like strip over and like you know lie down with it and hold it down, but you can't will know what to do to help, it, but just please do that, and I'm gonna get out of the way. That would be, I think, enough information for uh, Lilith to I know that Kaguya is concerned, but mm. uh, but he's telling her, you know, all the basic information she needs to know. And B, at least he doesn't sound like a complete cold asshole uh, about yeah, this. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's just part of its its character, right? It yes. tends to do this kind of, it just sort of it withdraws and shuts down rather than um, engaging when there's something stressful going on. Yeah, uh, I, I think this, we've, yeah. this these interactions with Lilith has shown that he, or it, sorry, it stays away from her path, um, just mm. gives her minimal information, but internally it's probably like panicking like everyone else. Mm. Yeah, that seems to be the uh, what is apparently going on here. Yeah, but I think this is uh, where the chapter is more becoming more interesting in terms of like biology, what it's happening, right? Mm-hmm. So we know that uh, Nikanj has connected to Lilith's body through the tentacles, and I assume it's probably like throughout the whole body, right? Like arms, torso, legs, stuff like that. Um, well, I think it, it it kind of it it like attaches in uh, twice in because yes, it, it, first it initially time, like first time it attaches, but like it she could feel like pain, like needles, uh, needle like pain. Hmm. I think it's almost like it. It's not um, sort of uh, its first attempt was kind of not coordinated, right? Yes, it just sort yes. of it, it like rushed and tried to latch on because it's it's you know distracted and in pain and didn't quite manage it correctly. So it has to like withdraw and try again, do it right. Yes. Um, so it's basically like you know she felt pain, but not as much as Nikan she imagined the pain. And it's like kind of like breathe, breathe deeply, right? And she's like, okay, okay, mm. but and it says like, okay, I need to re-detach and reattach again. Um, but to retouch the arm, I need to connect to the body again, to your body. So it's like, okay, let's start again. So then it touches properly to uh, to her body. And just like she says, like the searing pain through her uh, body, they're like going through and just initially. And then mm. basically the chapter just goes then more of like time passing by, things happening sort of like in the background, like, you know, somebody touches Lilith and she's like in the corner of ISIS that's like, and uh, on Kali just moving, removing some bugs from them. Somebody covering her, somebody giving her a pillow, somebody like moving parts of her body so that like, you know, it's more comfortable, um, mm. stuff like that, basically. Somebody feeding her and drink, giving her a drink. But that's when she realizes that, oh, it's Akja, right? So, um, and that brought some sort of confusion. It's like, oh, am I back in the house? But like, but that was during the night. But when they came again, you know, it's like, oh, it's actually still in the forest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she's kind of... Um almost immediately after connecting she's just sort of losing focus on what's going on immediately around her and is in this kind of abstracted dreamlike state just a little bit distant from from everything and you know you get all this background stuff and then she kind of starts to come back to it yes so it's it's like i can imagine that quite you know probably a whole day almost a whole day passed since um this whole when she was connected with nikanj Mm. and we are told that eventually like the wound started to heal like there was some sort of pus or ooze coming out very stinky but eventually it stopped it was just still a bit leaking but eventually once it all stopped leaking and anything just appearing from that wound Nikanj let her go Mm. yeah it seemed like she was um like she she didn't think that this would be adequate to to help it reattach right just sort of holding it in place like you know some like it's like I suppose if you, you know if you detach a if you cut off a limb or something like you need surgery to reattach all yes, the yes. the key bits right you got to put the the nerves and the blood vessels and stuff back in the right spot but um whereas in you know, in this scenario Lilith is just kind of like 
holding this thing in place. Uh, but it seems like they have enough um, enough control uh, in some sense, enough uh, uh, of the ability to influence the biology. Yeah, I think yeah, it was they... also the fact that um, the connection was for the for sake of like getting some nutrients out, I guess, from her, or maybe some information on the genes or something, just to speed up the process mm. of healing. Well, I mean, the, later on we get the, this kind of um, uh, a little bit of insight into the the process um, that is going on. So it's, I think it's uh, actually. Let me just read this quote: um, "Your body knows how to cause some of its cells to revert to an embryonic state. It can awaken genes that most humans never use after birth. We have comparable genes to that. Uh, comparable genes that go dormant after metamorphosis." Your body showed mine how to awaken them, how to stimulate growth of cells that would not normally regenerate. The lesson was complex and painful, but very much worth learning. Uh, so that's uh, Nikanj talking to Lith after the healing process is done. Um, so it seems like... Yeah, it's um, like it was basically it's, teaching itself how to heal by being connected to Lilith. It's pretty incredible, yeah. I would say. Interesting. Really interesting. It seems to have yeah, learned something about the way that her biology works, and then co-opted that to to uh, help its healing process. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, it, it's it's interesting um, how how it's, how quickly it's done, and it's. I guess it's. I personally think it's probably like uh, you know awakening the embryonic cells or the genes that were initially, and I guess it's like you know as we discussed discussed several episodes before, you know Yamanaka factors, and you know like those. Mm-hmm primary transcription factors that um, only appear or only transcribe in embryonic stages, right? When they're like the the, the, the differentiation of the cells hasn't taken place yet as of mm. yet, right? So uh, Yeah, I think we've, we've, we've talked a little bit about this before in kind of tissue regeneration contexts. And, um, and I talked about this sort of stuff a little bit on, when I was on the, the Bayesian Conspiracy podcast um, talking about aging. Yep, um, yep biology it's a similar kind of phenomenon right you've got this um this like de-differentiation of the cells right sort of just uh, pulling them back uh, to 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 let them um and uh, then become uh new tissue mm-hmm. um but then the uh, like the, the challenge is usually not um or at least i i, I the <laughs> I usually don't see the challenge as being getting the de-differentiation to work, getting the like the pluripotency to work, because that that we've kind of. Um, I think that we've covered, but I think the yeah. problem is then actually making the cells do what you want to do. Yeah, and it seems like um, it seems like for some reason the the uh, Owen Carly had that like backwards to us, right? They they can they can do the getting cells to do what they want, um, like down the hill kind of stuff but they have some difficulty going back up right doing the the um, which is really weird when you think about it because i mean in any scientific uh, work right like any you sort of break things apart right so you like you start from reverse mm-hmm. you have something at least in biology and you just go down the ladder basically right so yeah, you reductionism so you think that some ancient Onkali would, uh, you know, utilize things like microscopes and stuff like that. And, you know, do this like sort of basic research, like as we did to, you know, to be able to do that. Like it's, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, maybe. Um, although perhaps it's just because they have the sensory capability to perceive some of this stuff anyway, maybe they're, they're sort of less inclined to develop a, a technological approach to it right they can kind of rely on the the senses that they have to to perceive this stuff and I, there's not so much impetus to uh look at it with another tool when you already have a good one to have yeah i guess that probably explains know. why would they not be able to do that because in fact that you know being able to having the tools to break something apart and just trying to understand it versus to hmm. you know while having already the tool in their own bodies um to understand and control things but yeah it probably it, that makes sense yeah. that would, they wouldn't be able to figure this out just like that but i think this the this is quite this is a good um from a sort of uh, quality of biology perspective right i think it's quite a good um description right it's not uh uh, it's sort of completely implausible. No, no, right? absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, they, uh, the author hit really on the like the nail on the head because um, it's basically what 
we all hope to do well people working in regenerative medicine that's what the whole idea is utilizing yeah. our own cells bring them back to the stage but you know during um just after fertilization you know when the embryonic stem cells were created and then utilizing those cells to do something for us right to regenerate the tissue we're missing right so that's the ideal scenario so i think it's mm-hmm. it really does hit the general sort of view where it, yeah, you're aiming and, at and i think a little ahead of the curve on on that to some degree because this was um in britain in what uh, oh, 50, 60s? Something, no. 80, 80 something 80 something um, sorry 83 83 yeah, i think 80, uh yeah yeah which is you know we talked before about the yamanaka stuff on induced pluripotent stem cells being in the early 2000s yep. um so this is a uh, you know pretty uh uh, pretty um, cutting edge biology thinking for the time. But I think um, going back to this, we had this conversation before the episode, and I think um, mm. there's still this idea though, which nowadays obviously is rejected. But this shows like using the cancer cells, right? Initially, mm-hmm. when the cancer cells, when cancer was actually properly described and understood what it does, basically, no, not like cells regenerating themselves or copying themselves initially people were thinking when oh actually could we utilize this for our own benefit i.e using those cells to prompt regeneration of the tissue since they have this capability now we know that it's not really good idea because cancer cells are basically cells that have acquired so many errors in their uh, dna that that's not really the best it was a good starting point as an idea, but then we, of course, grew hmm. from there and used it. But it shows that at the yeah, time... Yeah, it was a little initially... When sh- uh, this idea was coming out, it seems that Otho was like, oh, cancer cells, regeneration of tissue. That's where, you know, that's wh- how she connected it all together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it, it's, uh, I think, a, a, an insightful uh, look on it from someone who you know, she didn't have a formal background in biology. Absolutely. She, uh, she kind of... Um, I, th- I think she taught herself a lot of this um, material for her books ju- by doing kind of um, research, you know, reading stuff at the library and, and listening to like um, uh, audiobook tape courses for stuff. So uh, like she was, she definitely really like engaged deeply with the material she was writing about. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and it shows. But, Absolutely. Uh, it shows yeah. that she did her so. research on this stuff. And, you know, she, mm. I, I think it's close. It was close at the time, the idea. Hmm. Um, obviously, nowadays, and, and, and I mean to be to be honest, it, it it's still the same idea. It's just more subtle. Yes, yes, it's more. <laughs> we're, uh, we're still interested in in getting the the kind of regenerative capacity that you get from a, you know the ability to divide cells in an environment where they're otherwise you know mature and no longer dividing. Yeah. Right, you're still interested in producing. That, yes, that, no, uh, the idea still stays. Repair but it's capacity, just the source just of the cells controlled. Well. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely. I think this is like the best sort of description of what. Um, the closest, I think, we'll say, uh, what science is aiming at. So, well done to her. Yeah, and absolutely, yeah. And so it was this sort of stuff that uh, that first got me. Um, like the, the reason I kind of pitched this book, right, was because I thought the the biology in it is actually really, really pretty yeah, good, absolutely. and it's really, uh, you know, uh, uh, interestingly employed in in, a, in this narrative setting. Yeah. I think um, the we, yeah. the reason uh, the reason why is in a thesis is why we started it is because a lot of books a lot of sci-fi books get chemistry and physics pretty well right Hmm. but biology is always a miss in a way one way or another yeah yeah i mean it's just the getting the the kind of having a good handle on the intuition for how it works from the perspective of, of someone who kind of works in the field yeah. right i mean you you get this quite a lot from like people have a good intuition for for the sorts of things that are plausible and not plausible in like the the near future of their their field's development and um and you know, just you know the sort of stuff that's just like oh no that's that, no that's nonsense and the sort of stuff that oh yeah okay that's, that's kind of plausible mm-hmm. right you, you get quite a lot of that um from uh sort of physicsy stuff in 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 other sci-fi but uh rarely does someone have quite a good a good intuition on the biology and its implications um and i think and a part of it is many of the implications for um biological technologies are very um very sort of politically sensitive right they, they touch on a lot of really uh, uh 
um, areas that we often don't like to spend too much time thinking yeah. about or that we uh, manage to get ourselves in trouble with other people when we spend too much time thinking about no. because their consequences are related to you know individual relationships and reproduction and sex and all of that and stuff yes and, uh, and it can get to the point where we have return of like the nazi ideology of like the greater uh, species right like this whole idea so yeah this is yeah, i think mention. this is the problem mm. that often yeah yeah i agree this, this this is the problem that people are facing um in writing about biology that can touch on topics that are very sensitive for people uh, mm. but in the mm. same time i think those topics should be touched upon because eventually yeah. sooner or later whether people we like it or not there will be modifications to our bodies not only just talking about implants and stuff like that i'm talking on full-on genetic modifications of children and stuff like that so yeah i mean that's that's really why uh, one of the most useful th sort of functions i think that science fiction has is the um doing the kind of informal thought experiments right and it's like we, we have these you know this speculative fiction that has uh, you know, a, an extrapolation of some of our capabilities in a way that's pretty plausible um but in a contrived scenario and it, it lets us think about what the consequences are and how we would how we would feel about yep. stuff, how we would react to it, um, and you know, it's it's useful for driving forward the 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 public discourse on these subjects because it provides a, you know an engaging way of exploring your thinking on these topics without actually pushing um, so it like you no, know, oh, what happened is it was on the planet Earth, yeah, 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 well, it's, yeah, like try, trying to remove it from the political specifics. Yeah. <laughs> Although but, it's uh, hard to um, not to put it because often hmm. you have to apply some sort of correlation to what's happening mm. here like what you know all countries doing this and they're you know and the other countries doing that and you know like and there will always be yeah, similarities yeah, I mean, because in fact no matter how much you want to escape it there will be always mm. scenarios that you know we all are aware of like hu humanity's greediness and you know all the evil but we also know how much good we did so it's yeah yeah and I mean, it it often acts as as, as social commentary as well, right? It's it's um, mm. absolutely uh, amplifying the the current um, the current problems with a technological means and shining a light on them through through you know hyperbole, yep. right? just exaggerating them a little bit and pointing out how uh, uh, how the problems are and how they might get worse if we follow along that same trajectory. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> but, uh, I think the book nailed yeah. it. But let's go back. Mm. Let's go back to the summary because I think we really went off tangent on here. Um, um, but I guess it was necessary to discuss. I, I, I'm sure we'll come back to this uh, in the last episode because um, mm -hmm. it, when we summarize everything and look throughout the, all the episodes, I think it will really um, help us to see how it um, yes. yeah. all connects. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah. So going back to okay. Lilith, when... Uh, you know, after Nikanj let her go, she, uh, um, when prompted, Nikanj tells her that it'll be fine, but surprisingly, there were no humans around. Dichan then proceeded to tell her that all humans are were ba sent back to the settlement, and they were sure, you know, they'll be sent to the Earth soon. Um, they have been shown the walls, and now they know they're on the ship. You should have shown them the walls on their first day. We will do that next time. That was one of the things we had to learn from this group. Better yet, <laughs> Prove to them they're in a ship as soon as they're awakened, she said. Illusion doesn't comfort them for long. It just confuses them, helps them make dangerous mistakes. I had begun to wonder myself where we really were. Silence. Stubborn silence. She looked at Nika and still a healing sensory arm. Listen to me, she said. Let me help you learn about us, or there'll be more injuries, more deaths. Hmm. Now, and this this is um, I think this is this is good because th this uh, reflects um, the, the, what we've been voicing for a while now. This kind of frustration that yes. the Owen Carly are not doing this in a way that makes sense um, for for handling the humans is is something that's that was intentional, right? Like you're kind of you're supposed to feel that, and now we have like the the, the sort of textual validation yes. of it from Lilith uh, and the Owen Carly here. It's like they're saying that you know the uh, you, you're, you're doing it wrong <laughs> um, uh, to the Owen Carly. Um, and, you know, we felt that, um, and so did Lilith. Um, and, and yet they uh, are stubborn and don't say anything yeah. about this, yeah. Yeah, they, they've, they've not understood the humans as well as they think they might have done, yeah. um, and they still have much to learn. Um, but 
could have short circuited that process by just I th- you know having slightly more respect for Lilith's yeah, opinion. Yeah, but I think it also <laughs> at this point, Richard. I don't know if you remember, mm. but at the very early chapters of the book, there was a conversation mm. between Lilith and Kaguya, and Kaguya goes, mm. "You will not understand this." I'm I'm paraphrasing because I don't exactly remember exactly how the mm-hmm. quote goes, but it was like this: "You don't understand this, and you will never will. But your children mm. will, uh, you know. But your children will, right?" Um, yeah. So yeah. I think, in a way, um, whatever the aliens were thinking, obviously this is now logical and Lilith's telling them there must be something else mm. going on. Maybe that the fact that the trade, the idea, right, that although this was all an experiment for them to know for future. I think the trade, that the attraction between them might be much more stronger than what humans can imagine, right? That even, for example, our Mm. equivalent of love and caring and stuff like that may not be even getting close to what they are feeling. It might, for them, be like being, for humans, being addicted to heroin or something. Yeah, they do seem to have a much more... um biologically potent process for for like um I don't know, well it's not really pairs in their case but for bonding yes. um between individuals and that kind of stuff you know it's a uh, quite um so i think those mistakes were not for visceral. the fact that um they were not paying attention but they were too start struck in a way maybe but i think it, i think what um Kaguya's observation there that you know you will never understand us uh and only your children will it, it's is um symmetric right it, it, it applies in the inverse so the 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 uloi um and the the Kali will never like fully understand the humans um On until they the uh, up, yeah. have yeah exactly right? because it's you know they have different and and alien minds that function along slightly different lines right it's it's difficult to to put yourself in in the experience of someone to really viscerally put yourself in the experience of someone else when you have that different uh, a set of properties right i mean it, it, it it's sort of um you know it's hard enough to do it sometimes just with other people you know, other humans who are you know, very very similar to us um but when you have an you know, a completely alien sensorium it's and very different in other aspects of cognition and so on you know like, perfect recall and, and all of these other things it's like um it relates to something we were talking about last week as well with, with senses right you know how do you effectively empathize with the experience of say on a, a dog um smelling something when you just don't have the range to experience it? yes yeah but also um i mean to some degree in the other direction right because it's um in terms of range right so what whilst the owen carly have like expanded capability mm-hmm. in certain areas, they may not be able to reason well about what it's like to not have that. Yeah, right. It, it, it's easy to forget that you have a perfect memory, <laughs> in the sense that uh, uh, when you're empathizing with someone else, that they don't. Right. At least in a kind of um, like, uh, well, again, kind of using. Uh, human cognition right but there's a difference between knowing knowing something in 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 the abstract knowing it intellectually and then and and knowing it um sort of intuitively and and emotionally in a way that that's effective at motivating you to do Mm -hmm. stuff right there's that uh there's a certain disconnect between just being aware of a thing and then really having internalized it Um, no absolutely absolutely i agree (laughs) so i think this is like the problem that Don Kaliar. This is, I think, the problem. And I, I guess, when finally we see some human Onkai uh, hybrids, that they will be able to bridge that gap in a way. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, be able to sort of uh, explain things that both humans and Don Kali can understand. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not sure. Well, I mean, yeah, they might. They might act as as a bridge to to other individuals who are. Um, who are on either side of that uh, divide, yep. right, to humans and Onkali, but also yeah, yeah. internally, they probably will be able to, to empathize more closely mm-hmm. uh, with the individual experiences of, of both Onkali and humans. Yep. But, you know, having that conversation, though, those, whatever mm. Lilith says to them, it's just, just like talking, you know, uh, it just flies away in the wind, right? It's just, there's no, they don't really acknowledge anything what, you know, what Lilith said to them. 
Um, and instead just yeah, the kind yeah. of diverts the conversation. It's just like, oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, they, they do seem to be being kind of like, like unreasonably arrogant about this. Right? Yes, <laughs> yes. It feels like a... so stubborn, like it's crazy. Um, hmm. I mean, I've, I've been trying to think about it from, from both perspectives in like, uh, trying to think about it as a, like, what reason do I have to, as if I'm in the Owen Carly shoots, what reason do I have to trust the humans thinking on how to corral the humans right i mean to some degree it's like they have first-hand experience of what it's like to be a human so they may well be better at understanding anticipating them in some ways than others but there's also that um sometimes it's it's more effective to be an outsider right you know oftentimes you know if you sit outside you can see some of the patterns and the abstractions that people who are in a thing don't notice Yes, yes Uh, so like the outside view is useful but also the inside view is useful right neither is uh completely without merit (laughs) they both add together and you need to combine them in order to get something that's going to be a more accurate picture no absolutely Um, you're correct in here yeah i guess it's sort of like the objective perspective in a way but then again it's like who watches the watchman Mm. right like do you you have the perspective of someone from the inside you have the perspective of someone from the outside but what if the perspective from the outside is not really um representing what actually is happening on the inside right because mm-hmm. there is the discontent the disconnection between them and no matter what Lilith says to them it's like it's not even they're not even considering that opinion in right that's i think that's the problem there hmm yeah, I think there's, there's the other thing is there's the certain inherent kind of structural biases you get from taking the outside view that are accommodated that that manifest in 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 what you can measure mm-hmm. effectively. It's like the stuff that is observable from the outside becomes overrepresented in your model of how things work. Yep. Um, whereas the stuff that's harder to observe that that's that's acting on a kind of more um, a more subtle level gets slipped under the radar and then you kind of fall into a false sense of security about the the validity of, of yeah. your model because it's able to predict all of these things that you observe but um uh, it, it it's it's still not you know the, the map is not the territory right it, it's not uh, uh a perfect representation of the system and there are still going to be some some behaviors you haven't quite uh, captured yet true. so, so true. you've got to uh, iterate <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. Yeah, it is pretty much like that. And I think it's it's hard to find the balance and I think in this particular scenario that that balance is purposely in the book. Um it there's no balance in between because there's no hmm. connection between those two species, right? Between humans and Yeah, yeah. So Yeah, so they're not sort of taking the, the um the qualitative data from Lilith's experience and, and, and using it to do some hypothesis generating and tweak their models accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, to put it in maximally nerdy terms. Basically. But uh, yeah. So yeah, but going back, the chapter is like, it, as we said, it was like, yeah, it was talking like, to the, for Lilith, it was like talking to a wall. She just, you know, mm. there's no really conversation about this at the time. So... And he kind of was like, okay, completely dismissed her and asked her, like, so which way do you want to go? Do you want to go through the forest or do you want to go just completely leave this room and just go underneath the ground, underneath it and faster away? Though, um, Nikanj thought, though, though it didn't move when they were like, okay, let's just go through the forest, but it didn't move and they said that actually it has never happened before to be able to heal such a wound so quickly and so completely. To which Lily responded that there was no reason for it to die or be maimed and if she could help, she would. Um, so it seems like, you know, just briefly, like, this, 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 it was first time, even though, you know, the first alloy that we talked about was hacked, you know, by an axe that carries the chest, the ability to, for example, for Nikanj to actually regenerate so quickly has never happened before. Mm. So it seems that, like, this process of, you know, the cancer cell, the, whatever they used, the Nikanj used, was really helped it to activate its body on regeneration that it lost after metamorphosis. Yeah, yeah. So then Nikanj asks, uh, you know, Aichi and Chan about Joseph's body, and they said it's it's got, it's frozen at the moment, and it'll be sent to Earth to be um to be laid down. And uh, Kurt, on the other hand, is in the suspended animation. It'll be used as a guinea pig for experiments on cancer regeneration. When 
Lilith asks about it Khan said the cancer in mm. her body or in the cursed product body is not a problem anymore and it's a gift thanks to it it was alive I just said that, that if the arm could not be healed but it can't survive it'd probably leave Akja and the Chan and to become a Toad or Akja um, part of the group so I thought that I should to and leave the earth because without the sensory arm mm. it would not be able to conceive children they felt like Lilith did with Joseph uh, they felt like Lilith did with Joseph until Nikash told them it would recover completely yeah it's an interesting uh, little um, sort of insight from that into the way that their of their culture um, in a way the society is organized yeah yeah because it, it seems like um, uh, like um Nikanj's biological function of being able to uh, mix uh, the bio- the genetics of the parents of its uh, of the children that it creates is is you know really tied up with its almost like occupation. I don't you know, they don't really it's it's unclear what their kind of economic model, if any, is. Um, but you know it, its kind of function in their society is very much tied up with its with its biology. Yeah, if you can have children, um, you can stay. If you're not, you're going to different clan in a way yep yep it would have to or you know it would, it would effectively break up this this relationship that it has with the hydras and dishan and it would you know go to to uh uh you know, a, 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 another place and set, set on, a, on a distant very distant end point yeah. right be, it's, uh, it's interesting because they call separated. it the alloy is in their language is supposed to be the precious one precious one or something that you know that they bring mm. that um ability to make children and stuff like that but it's pretty crazy mm. that the fact that the Onkali don't have the, like, you know, some families in, in humans can't have children, right? Because of reason A, B, or C, right? So there's mm. this ability to adopt, right? But yeah, the yeah. fact is that, you know, it doesn't mean that Nikanj could, would lose that ability to sense genetics, right? Am I correct? Or is it mm. would be complete without that arm, it can't do anything? Well, it has two sensory arms, yeah, right? So, so I, I think it can still perceive it's just that it um uh, presumably it needs two to make two connections to two parents but uh, i guess so but like uh, it just feels a bit strange yeah. wasn't it the the konkali it, it's first time actually we can tell something about the onkali culture that it's mm. it's very strict when it comes to like if it can produce babies good if it can't uh you go to a different clan yeah i mean they do they have quite um uh, I think we kind of we talked a little bit about this back towards the beginning when when um, Lilith was, was living with them and the, they seem to have these very uh, biologically defined uh, gender roles I suppose you might call them uh, and and it is it is um, I think it's it's tied up with that with their biology because so much of their uh, the, their culture and their like their attachments the sort of you know, the strength of their um, Emotional attachment seems very much to be tied up in 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 biology mm-hmm. in in a way that's more um, sort of viscerally felt for them than necessarily for for yeah. us. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, yeah, like um, you know, there's some animals that have a you know a sort of a pair bonding process that that presumably is quite like uh, compelling. Um, whereas I mean, when a humans pair bond, but we do it in uh, and we do it biologically, you know, to some degree, with with you know, you know pheromones and oxytocin and attachment and all that kind of stuff. But uh, also quite kind of emotional, uh, it's sort of most uh, less emotionally rather, um, quite kind of intellectually. Right? We do it as kind of a an exercise in in like uh, finding um, and like optimal resources for the for the kids. Right? Yes, so, yes, yes. In a way. And, uh, yeah, I mean, unconsciously, right, for the most part, right. But oftentimes, a lot of what we end up doing in kind of relationship searching is like finding someone who's a a, a good partner to raise children with, even if we're not doing it consciously. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's. I no. guess I was thinking about this recently about like how, what, is necessary for a relationship, right? In this part, this pattern, mm. actually, in fact, is there's the physical requirement. Obviously, the physical touch is necessary for the proper relationship the emotional attachment right the emotional support and but also the intellectual um um, support and um challenge in a way right Mm. that in a way that's you know it's you know it's fun to have you know lots of sex blah 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 blah, and you know supporting each other but if there's no stimulation of each other right you know in terms of like the intellectuals uh, whatever new things learning new things or like you know whatever it 
each other mm. person is interested in and try to get to know those things or like finding something new interesting yeah. through them like stuff like that right but that that's that's also very much tied up with the fact that because we're cultural in our transmission of heritable information to a significant mm-hmm. degree right you know around about half of stuff's biology around about half of its yeah. culture but a lot of the uh uh that kind of intellectual compatibility or the, that intellectual challenge is, is coupled up with the ability to to transmit your ideas to mm-hmm. your kids right it's it's the same the same kind of principles as it's applied in the genetics it's like finding someone who's not merely complementary to you in some sense genetically but also uh biologically in it or ideologically i suppose like in in, in not really ideological in that, in that sense but you know like having certain ideas or having certain um having been exposed to certain stuff in culture that because that is also important for for survival and thriving of of kids in in human contexts it's it's uh you know complementary there as well and to be honest i it's just trying to sort of apply this sort of model to the on kali doesn't fit mm. at all does it now because of all the information we have at the moment because it's we don't really know about the whole idea of like the physical requirements we really don't know about how necessary for them sex is i guess you know well we do know because when nikan like makes joseph and Lilith basically have uh brain sex um you know mm. it's enjoying it as well so i guess and it's made them a few times to do it so i guess it's it's they want it and yeah and i think it's um, it might be because of the tight coupling of their their cultural inheritance and their biological inheritance yeah right but we've not really seen many sort of different Owen Kali cultures, right? They don't seem to be factions or groups in them. They're kind of a very much, they present to us as a very unified whole, which means that like within that broader uh, community, there's less kind of impetus for focusing on the uh, cultural transmission bit. Yeah, but but right? then the, again, the, the bit that's interesting groups, is the biological right? there's transmission. There's the Toa, the Akja, and the third one that stays on Earth, right? So it's it's more of like... True. Although even that seems to be somewhat biologically driven. Yes, I would um, say yes. But the question is, how do they choose that? Right? Who stays and who goes on with the old ship and who makes the new ship? Right? So that's true. So that's, true. I think that's that's not mm. entirely clear in here in this fact that you know there's one thing about inheritance, but in the same time, how do they choose who stays, who goes? Right. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of, it's more almost of like a dispositional question than, um, you know, sort of what, what sorts of experiences do they want to, to have, right? Are they, are they particularly like open to new stuff and wanting to interbreed with the new species or are they, um, more conservative in attitude and wanting to carry on the existing line or, you know, whatever the, um, uh, sort of those things are, it's almost like, personality trait that might kind of fit you well to one of those three branches but it's not like it's not the same thing as kind of a a a more political or ideological um difference at at a higher level i feel like we still have not enough information Uh, about it to be able to deduce what's the yeah yeah. what's the actual factor behind Mm. it yeah we still don't know a great deal about how their society is organized so Going back to the conversation, this is where, like, we earlier we talked about, you know, how Kaguya was behaving. This is what the book says, is that Kaguya mm. behaved as though nothing unusual, unusual were happening. But it kind of says, it was frightened for me. It knows you dislike it. It thought any instructions from it beyond the essential will anger or delay you. It was badly frightened. Lilith laughed bitterly. It's a good actor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it a, makes sense yeah, that he doesn't want to interact because he knows he ha- she hates him. Um, yeah, and I to be honest, mm-hmm. I do too. So, um, the chapter finishes basically with them going back to the settlement, and as they did, Lith thought one last thing that she hoped that whatever experiments Don Kali will perform on Kurt, that it would hurt, or at least he was aware of what was happening, or uh, as they do it, yeah, yeah. So, a little bit of a uh, vindictive <laughs> uh, thinking towards yeah. Kurt here, because uh, <laughs> he's uh, yeah, he's uh apparently got some kind of cancer predisposition that makes him a, a, an interesting lab rat for the Owen Carly. So uh, <laughs> she's uh, fully understandable. Hoping that doesn't go well fully for Fully understandable him. <laughs> from Lilith's side. Which, uh, yeah, I, I think I, I kind of get <laughs> that. Mm. So 
I guess in chapter yeah. eight prediction from I mean this is we are almost finishing. So at this point I think that this chapter I thought that um you know there this is the last time last time maybe second last time where we meet the rest of the settlement because we know they're heading over so mm-hmm. it's the situation where people are either avoiding Lilith or that's what hostile was and I thought maybe there would be some final confrontation about this whole situation that took place, you know, and and I thought that it'll be Gabriel. Like, I generally thought that this, this story between H- Lilith and Gabriel hasn't finished yet. Hmm. So, but I, I wasn't okay. certain what may happen. Like, I thought that maybe, actually, in fact, that they will just take them away and sorry, bye-bye, Lilith. Hmm. I mean, there is there's kind of an exchange with with um, Tate and Gabriel, right, between Lilith uh, and, and those two, right? She sort of uh, uh, you know, they have words. Yes. So <laughs> yeah. in chapter eight, what starts is when like they finally reach the camp. It's already dark. The on Kali were just sort of separate, staying together, you know, touching each other to, to come and communicate while the humans sat by the fires. Lilith decides to join the fire with Allison, Leah, Ray. Gabriel and Tate, and as she did, Tate gave her some baked yam, and surprisingly fish. And you know, and Lilith was like asking, mm-hmm. looked at Ray, and he and it, he went was like, "Oh, actually, you know, I t- caught it with my hands. Fish just swam towards him, and he caught it." With um, Don Kali claimed I could have been mm-hmm. caught by s- myself by some of the other things that were swimming in the river, like electric eels, piranha, caiman, but caimans. But they mm-hmm. they brought all the worst things from there. Nothing bothered me though. I guess there's some probably influence of <laughs> Onkali there just to uh, doing something. Yeah, maybe they kind of uh, altered his smell a bit, so he's uh, off-putting to yeah. Cayman. <laughs> and we are told that the Victor found actually a couple of turtles, um, but they didn't know how to prepare them, so they basically cut them up for meat and roasted them. Hmm. Yeah, uh, it's a... I, I like turtles, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, I just, I, I've so... heard before stories of people, you know, like uh, um, seamen. Uh, when they, you know, all time, like, you know, 200 years ago when they were traveling around the, uh, play, uh, you know, the world, um, they would, you know, obviously it's meat. If you have no meat, what are you going to do? Hmm. But flavor-wise, I don't know. This imagines me to be chewy. Yeah, appara- well, actually, there's uh, not, not so much turtles, but apparently tortoises were supposed to be um, delicious. Like the, the giant Galapagos uh-huh. tortoises. Like uh, 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 there are several species of those who are more or less attributed to going extinct because they were too tasty. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, and uh, there's a, a number of them like uh, never got back to um, uh, like the, the sort of museum collections and stuff in in Europe, basically because they were all eaten on the oh, way. Right? Wow, <laughs> like they, they were intended to be taken back for the collection, but they apparently made good shipboard food sources because they weren't. Um, you know, they had a lot of water in them. They retained a lot of water. Um, they didn't need much by way of uh, feeding, and you could just sort of, you know, they're not too hard to immobilize. So the poor things were um, <laughs> often eaten on yeah. ships, apparently. That's, yeah. But, yeah. I feel sorry, really sorry for them. <laughs> but what can you do at this point? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I mean, the, the tortoises just seem so generally, generally sort of a bit helpless and a bit yeah, hapless. It, yeah, just, it seems kind of heartless to eat. Kind of really, like, I mean, they can fight you if they fight, but like, I mean, I don't think they're that fast, are they? Yeah. No. So, <laughs> really still, not. It's just, you, yeah. it's just complete utilization of those poor tortoises by humans. Mm. Yep. Yeah, well. So. Yeah, going back, you know, Lilith then asks, you know, how was it, like, the whole, you know, the med- but before, uh, she gets like, yeah, we ate it, nothing more, but, like, but while they did, the Onkali stayed away from them, and Ray then went sit- happily mm-hmm. saying, oh, you know, you don't see that any Onkalis are on the fire, to which Gabriel says, I'm not sure, and this is where the conversation goes with Lilith and Gabriel, Lilith sighed, okay, mm-hmm. Gabe, have you got, come on, questions, accusations, cond- you know, condemnations? Maybe all three. It's like, well, you didn't fight. You choose to stand with Don Kali. Against you? Angry silence. Where were you standing when Kurt hacked Joseph to death? Tate laid her, her, um, her hand on Lil's arm. Kurt just went crazy, she said. She spoke very softly. No one thought he would do anything like that. He did, Liz said, and you all watched. There was a silence for a while, and then Ray demanded why she did lie down naked with Don Kali. To which she said she... That the fight was over and there was no need to, there was needed, there was need to help. 
uh, to help Nikash mm. to he- heal itself. Why, why would she want to help it, asked by Gabriel. Why didn't she just let it die? But Lilith told him off because she knew that Nikanj, she knew Nikanj from when it was kid. And what was the point? No, she would be stuck with some strange if Nikanj died, you know, different family. And Gabriel, though, responded mm-hmm. to her that, you know, she always has an answer, but it never quite rings true. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, so this, yeah, it's a, a interesting here because you know, Lilith has always been very kind of straightforward yeah, with yeah. people in this context, right? She's usually been pretty kind of upfront about it. I like this engagement. Is, and it's, know, it's really... Like another... Okay, Gabe, what do yeah, you it's got? It's really hypocritical right? from It's, Gabe, it's very measured. It's very calm. Because, mm. like, he always was, like, not entirely honest with his own answers. So it's like it's like projecting his own problems onto her, basically. Yep, yep. Um, uh, and I like this section where mm. it goes, like, she went over in her mind the things she could have said to him about his own tendency not to ring true. The case proven. Mm. That's why she also thought. Ignoring them all, she, uh, she asked, what is it, Gabe? What do you believe I can do or I could have dwa- done to set you free on Earth one minute sooner? Obviously, <laughs> Gabriel couldn't respond to that. Like he was just looking for someone to blame, and yep. you know, Tate then tried to hold his yep. hand, but eventually they moved away, as if you know, recalled in revulsion. Same situation that happened to Lilith and Joseph. Tate then asked mm-hmm. Lilith, yep. "Why is this happening? Why so can't li- they touch?" And like Lilith at the time didn't have really time to ask uh, Nikanj about this, and you know maybe Gabriel could ask Kaguya, but he responded, "He doesn't want to talk to it." Alison goes, "Really?" Uh, but Lilith res- uh, responds to her. Uh, uh, answer before Gabriel. No, he wishes to he hated Kaguya, but in the fighting he only tried to hurt Nikanj. But here he is, blaming her for all of it. Don Kali set her up like this. I don't give a shit what you feel, he said. You're talking about your feelings, not mine. Strip and screw your Nikanj right here for everyone everyone to see. Why don't you? We know you're their whore. Everybody here knows. She looked at him, abruptly tired, fed up. And what were you when you spent your nights with Kaguya? And at hmm. this point, I personally also felt that it was just millimeters away from Gabriel just going and just trying to attack her, right? But um, yeah, and to be well, honest, I would hope I mean, for that it, attack, uh, and I think Lilith also wanted it to happen. But um, oh yes, it says unknown for a moment she wanted yeah. him to. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, we, we talked about this, I think, back when um, when the uh, Uloi were first sort of pairing off with the humans. Um, that there would be this kind of accusation um oh yeah of you know like uh, sleeping with the enemy as it were um but that because they'd done it with everyone it kind of made them all complicit so you couldn't do it you couldn't accuse others of it without being exactly i think um, that was a which, point well yeah. one thing that onkali needed to do the trade so they had to pick up the humans but also mm. the fact mm. that they did it is i think was the second meaning behind which was sort of a side effect in the way that they, as you said, mm. they couldn't just be like, "Oh, because I didn't do it," you know, I'm better, but they all did. So, yep. Uh, so it's like there's there's some stuff they they've got right, right? There's some stuff they've kind of looked from the outside and been clever about, but there's other stuff that they've yeah. missed. So it's it's not like they're stupid. It's just that they're uh, you know um, sometimes they're a little, just a little bit um, uh, overconfident in that they've got their ideas right, right? So they're. They they do have some good strategies for handling the humans, but they've just got a few bits missing that mean that it goes outside of what they yep, were expecting. Absolutely. Mm. So yeah, the chapter mm. here ends that for a moment it looked like Gable is about to attack her, but then he just turns around and leaves with Tate. Kaguya then comes mm. over and says, "No, she could have avoided it, but Lilith only responds to it. She's tired of it and quits. No more scapegoating for them." And the chapter ends basically with her imagining what would Joseph say, that there was no point of making people against her. No, I'm making people angry, making people go against her, but there was no point of trying anymore. She was tired and Joseph was not there, not, not there anymore. That's where the chapter ends. Yeah, yeah. That's a, I mean, and uh, but uh, it's interesting because e- even here when she's being kind of short with, with, with Gabriel for good reason, right? Uh, it, she's still, you know, the, the level-headed, intelligent, pragmatist that she's been from the start right it's just the uh you know what could i have done to get you out of this sooner right i was i've been acting in our uh, collective interest of humanity right from the start and you you're constantly accusing you know, her giving me yeah, grief I about think it this is the, <laughs> I, I personally think that 
although I understand Lilith that her pragmatism, I would be personally much more angry mm. about this. Like this whole situation, you know, the 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 lack of the the ignorance, the lack of you know, um, um, just standing by the sidelines. But I, the thing is, that's me. I'm always was you know trying to that type of person who always tries to protect people, even though you know that they, they maybe not need it. And I would be get angry because, mm. you know, if the guy is like this was like, you know, telling me like you're a whore, it's like, what are you been doing, right? What have you been doing? The same thing, right, mate? So don't don't mm. try to play shift the blame on me because you're just even worse in this case. You'll just uh, to yeah. be honest, I would probably use much more offensive words towards uh, Gabriel if I was in Liv's position. <laughs> and I wouldn't mince I wouldn't yep. you know mince my words. I would l- throw raw meat at him just then and there because mm. that's, that's a, one of the things that I, I really I like about Lilith as a protagonist is this kind of aspect of her, her character right she, she's very measured she's she's not uh, and she's not um, not particularly I mean aside from that slight vindictive uh, thought of, of you know, having the experiments go not so nicely for uh, Kurt at the end but I mean he just killed her, her significant other right so that's understandable but uh, for the most part, like she, she wishes no ill on on anyone else, right? She's and uh, she, even you know she, she's you know, going out of her way to help Nakanj when it's going to when it cost her, even though he's an alien, uh, she has no interest in 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 killing the the Uloi as as, as um, um, Allison's yeah. Uloi pointed out to her. She could probably have done that, but she's like, no, I, I don't want to kill any of you. I just I want to be left alone by you, um, and. Her sort of interactions with the other humans have been, you know, like she's calm and patient and and not overly confrontational with them, which is probably the best move here. No, because, I, I honestly you know, if you have think an overly aggressive lack of um, yeah. escalating the situation is what really yeah, I yeah, admire about it. her character because I mm. would be, you know, zero to hundred very quickly for what you know all these things that Gabriel said to her. Right and yeah, I said it's a it's a good word like just escalating. Right, she's she's very good at de-escalating yeah. stuff. She she keeps it on the level. And in fact, yeah. like I think and and especially in go on go on go on. Uh, especially in her, uh, especially in her uh, situation because like she she's in a kind of um, a difficult spot to try and persuade other people that she's acting in good faith. Right. So for, from the outside, from the other people in the in the human party, as it were. Right. You, it would be difficult to to trust Lilith because you know she's she's been with the the aliens. She may be acting on their behalf. Like there's this this like you can understand why that suspicion exists. So her kind of not getting like angry with them at that about the about not trusting her about not uh, uh, sort of giving her the benefit of the doubt. Um, not getting sort of really like readily angry about that is i think a, a really valuable trait for her still being alive yeah. at this point <laughs> no I, I think it comes to leaders no. i think she is the leader that i would want to follow in a way because the fact that, mm. that she can de-escalate situations and maintain that sort of level of headness right is it's surprisingly mm-hmm. for me that more people did not follow her and so many people left so quickly. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's because of the fact that she's um, kind of um, imposed on them by the Owen Carly. I think that's what sort of th- there's a level of baseline distrust yeah. of her as the sort of having been nominated to act on their behalf as kind of a jailer uh, for these people that has sort of you know suborned this this distrust of her in them, which which makes yeah. sense, um, but. Uh, you, you can certainly see why the Owen Carly picked her for this role, uh, reluctant though she was to to, uh, to play it, but because she has all of the right um, sort of character traits to to yeah. pull it off yeah, effectively. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, I, I think I think as it comes to protagonist, I think she's one of the more interesting ones that I've encountered in a while, and yeah her story being stuck in a position where you can't really do anything and your only way solution is to just keep your head down for the time being until you had you reached the point to take the step and you know escape or whatever mm-hmm. was really commandable and something that i wish i would be able to pull off the same right and 
Hmm. It's a shame that Aunt Kali did not listen to what she was saying. But I guess maybe things will change the next book. Maybe, hopefully. Yeah, Probably maybe. not. <laughs> Probably he's just still ignoring her and, you know, still using her as hmm. a scapegoat. Hmm. But who knows? Yeah, yeah. And it's... it's, it's uh, one of the, yeah, I like I, I do really like Lilith as a protagonist. She's a very interesting character to to follow along with, and, and um, but one of the things I, I find about her situation that's really interesting is is, is this kind of um, the the nature of the manipulation that's going on, right? So she's she's not being kind of like um, like bluntly coerced into it. Uh, and she, she's you know, like, like we said kind of way back towards the beginning of this that she's very much aware of the fact that she's being manipulated into mm-hmm. this function um for the oh uh, and but it's still effective because she has you know she has no other yeah. way out of it. it it's uh uh you know and she's sort of making the best of this this situation um in in a way that's it, yeah it, it presents for a really uh really sort of refreshing kind of story because you know, very rarely do you do you have this kind of um intelligent character who's just like boxed in like this uh it's uh yeah i i find it you know the the, the being sort of partially in Lilith's head for, for this whole uh narrative is is uh a very Absolutely. interesting experience it's very, uh, yeah. very stimulating because you yeah. It presents a lot of kind of interesting moral and intellectual conundrums. Mm. And yeah, you really kind of form a uh, definitely. I find I find myself very much admiring her character. That's, I think it'll be a good idea yeah. to sort of discuss this next episode uh, when we yes. summarize yeah. the book. We look through um, some funny moments, I guess. When we you know, I, I'm sure I, you know, like all, all our hating on Kaguya and stuff like that. Um. <laughs> yep. Yep. As so we will, um, after we read the the next chapter uh, uh, next week, we're doing kind of a um, a retrospective yes. portion of the episode, going back and looking over the the whole book and uh, revisiting see, some stuff. See so, what uh, topics we covered, what conversations we had. Um, see, mm-hmm. you know, like the storyline. What uh, you know, what how how the whole book covers itself. What what happened, sort of in summary. Um, Hmm. Yeah, address some of the the overarching themes and uh, and that kind of thing. What yeah. any plot holes that maybe have creeped up on the other on the uh, on the or maybe some plot open strands. Well, I, I don't know. I don't know about plot holes as such. I mean, the the term's a bit nebulous, but yeah. I mean, we discuss the nature of the plot because it is a, a bit of an unusual plot yep. in some ways. Um, but. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess okay, okay. this leaves yeah, the okay. final prediction for the last chapter of the book. So mm-hmm. I think, right, for the last chapter, obviously there's time to prepare to leave the Earth. But with the recent events and with people knowing that something is different in the Lilith, right? Meaning that not only that you know, mm. she spent longer time with the Onkali, as we discussed, but also physically different that something is, you know, regeneration and stuff like that, similar to what Joseph was. They will try to avoid her, and as we remember the conversation when Joseph was still alive, that you know, or with Joseph alive, and he kind of just like this, they were a- trying to aiming to do something to her, right? Considering the fact that what happened mm-hmm. to them, I think they will still try to escape, uh, use her as a scapegoat when they are alone in a way. So, mm. yeah, down, down on earth. earth. So, yeah. question okay. is, what if? Lilith is to be left behind on the ship when everybody else to go and she's going to be continued to be a sort of leader for future humans other humans mm. to come back to earth okay so I think there might be something that the last chapter is going to be like actually Lilith, you're staying here with us because there's a chance that you're gonna get killed or something hmm okay interesting prediction or at least for the time being, because yeah, obviously yeah. Nikanj, Arch, and Dichan are all from the faction that will go to Earth, so maybe not yet, but... Hmm, hmm. At least a, a delay, not going down yes, with this Yes, at party. least not with this party, because yeah. knowing what happened, they will try to sort of re- make another party that will be more with Lilith, and then when they go on down on the Earth, hmm. you know, Lilith faction versus Gabriel's faction, or something along those lines. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So, uh, do you think we'll see any of uh, any of what else is going to? So assuming your prediction mm -hmm. pans out, what do you think she'll be doing on on the on the ship? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. I guess, as I said, I thought that maybe the fact is that. Um, I don't know, maybe, you know, Joseph is dead now, so maybe Nick Hange will introduce more humans to her, who knows, as a potential partner. Maybe at the mm. time there will be, like, some sort of break away from the whole situation. Um, you know, she wants to take some break to sort of mentally recover from the, what happened. Um, mm. I mean, now, since Nick Hange is an adult, I guess maybe an, on, on, a new Ankali between Ahja and Dichan will be made, you know, you know, but um, I don't know. I think mm -hmm. the next steps in the next book will be like, oh, actually, you know, Lilith, you're staying at the moment because we need you to train more people. And she's like, shit, okay. not again. <laughs> yep, uh, so being used to, to like uh, try and uh, get another cohort of humans ready to yeah, go down. Yeah, it's going to be off. like the San Andreas oh. meme, you know, like CJ guys, like, shit, here we go again. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> right well, uh, well i suppose we'll see uh next episode when whether or not that yes that pans thank out. you very much uh, everyone for right. listening we are a thesis you can find the links to all the places we upload our podcast on our website xenothesis.com boom nailed it i was michael glinka <laughs> i was rich Jackson. goodbye <laughs>